Good evening, everyone. So who here is ready to finally get John and Lauren married? Yeah. <laughs> On behalf of John and Lauren and their families, I welcome you to the celebration of their commitments to each other. As we progress through this celebration, please remember to breathe. I think it's kind of for us up here more than them. <laughs> And, and what is it? Don't lock your legs, right? And we invite you to breathe with us as we go through this event. So how did this happen? There's a hundred of the most important people to John and Lauren in this beautiful setting in Dripping Springs. Where did this all start? John and Lauren first met at a leadership development program where they were focusing on self-expression. John had been through a couple times and Lauren's first time. So John was a coach of a group that Lauren was in. So what that meant was they talked at least once a week. They talked about their careers. They talked about who they were seeing. In a way, they were unloading and venting and about their respective situations. 
in a way, coaching each other on their relationships. They were vulnerable. They were open. They were candid. They completed the program and felt as if they had built a trusted friend. Several weeks went by. They were busy creating their lives, you know, being parents, being professionals. Then one day, John left a voicemail. And, and for the younger people, that, that's something older people use to communicate. <laughs> well, John's, uh, he left a voicemail specifically because he wanted Lauren to hear his voice. That was his strategy. <laughs> and it was perfect timing. It had been a challenging day. Lauren said yes, thinking to herself, I'd like to talk to somebody I trust, someone safe, someone caring. So on Tuesday night, they got together for a drink. It must have been some drink <laughs> and some conversation. Because by Friday, both of them were making their Dear John and Dear Jane calls, telling everybody that they were seeing, uh, I have found somebody. We're done. This is who I want to spend the rest of my life with. That was on uh, Friday. On Saturday, Lauren met John's mother. One more note on the middle of their courting process. At 2 a.m., texting back and forth or calling back and forth, they revealed to each other that they had both made a list of the qualities they were looking for. Interesting, both lists had 26 items. And because they'd been in a course to express themselves, they were courageous and just let the list go. And it was spot on. The story continues today with all of you here to bear witness to their unwavering commitment to family, a good life, and at the core of this is love and being lovable, honor and being honorable, cherish and being cherishable with each other. John and Lauren have asked me to take a moment to acknowledge those who've made a significant impact in their lives and supported them along the way. The path that led them to each other has been a spiritual experience. To them, spirituality is recognizing and celebrating that we are all inextricably connected to each other by a power greater than us. And that our connection to that power and to each other is grounded in love and compassion. To their parents, their siblings, their children, co-parents, friends, colleagues, coaches, and mentors. Your example of patience, compassion, leadership, encouragement, commitment, and love has given them the strength and inspiration to create a better future for themselves, to have the grace and compassion for themselves and others, and to triumph over the past and be a contribution to those around them. John and Lauren say thank you. Catherine? I had the pleasure of uh, being introduced to Lauren in 2008 by a most amazing woman who had an incredible zest for life, creative, she was beautiful, she was had an incredible outlook on life. She was positive. She imbibed that on you. I had no idea at the time the gift that Tina was giving me by bringing Lauren to this gathering. One that I'm incredibly grateful for and have no words to express the immensity of that gratitude. Sadly, Tina is no longer with us. And Lauren wanted her represented here today. She would just be so happy for you and for John. Celebrate you. So this poem was read at Tina's funeral and it was a poem that she had journaled about and she was very creative and so she wrote. She would, she would choose quotes and then write and riff on it and um, just share the beauty of her thoughts and 
So, for Tina. And this is an excerpt from Marian Williamson's book, A Return to Love. Miracles themselves are not to be consciously directed. They occur as involuntary effects of a loving personality, an invisible force that emanates from someone whose conscious intention is to give and receive love. As we relinquish the fears that block the love within us, we become God's instruments. We become his miracle workers. God, as love, is constantly expanding flourishing and creating new patterns for the expression and attainment of joy. When our minds, through focus on love, are allowed to be open vessels through which God expresses, our lives become the canvases for the expression of that joy. That's the meaning of our lives. We are here as physical representations of a divine principle. To say that we're on the earth to serve God means that we're on the earth to love. We weren't just randomly thrown onto a sea of rocks. We have a mission, and that's to save the world through the power of love. The world needs healing desperately, like a bird with a broken wing. People know this, and millions have prayed. God heard us. He sent help. He sent you. I've known John for a very long time, almost as long as I've lived in Austin. One thing I can say about John is that he loves being a parent, and one of his greatest joys is fatherhood. So he wanted to in invite and bring his late father, George, to the celebration today. And there are attributes and qualities to John's dad that he carries forward in his life. And those qualities are gentleness, patience, kindness, and unconditional love. If he was here today, he would be very proud of you. Standing up here, taking Lauren's hand. So we'd like to take a moment and honor those that are not with us, especially Tina and George and your grandparents, along with your sister, Leanne, and her two sons, who were unable to make it today. Thanks, Joel. A child is born into the world, a lovable child, a child that accepts love from their mother, their father, relatives, nurses, doctors, well, just about anyone who's willing to love them. The child grows and easily accepts love from others. It's not something they learn, it's who they are being, lovable. As the child grows and begins language, you know that language you talk in your head all the time and some of the stuff that you say out in the world? That internal language that keeps speaking to them never stops and eventually one day makes up a story that there's something wrong with them. That they need to be, do, or have something before they can accept love from others. They are not lovable unless they be someone, do or have something that they think they are not. Sometime around the age of seven, they are unwilling to accept love unconditionally. Now we're gathered today in support of two people who are committing to marriage and unconditional love. 
Unconditional love starts with having no conditions that we must meet to be able to accept love. Unconditional love starts with our ability to accept love from others as our authentic selves. No story in our head that we need to look a certain way, weigh a specific amount, talk a certain way, say certain things, dress a certain way, marry a specific person, or have that certain job. That however we are, we are enough to accept love from others and from ourselves. We can surrender to we are enough. And being enough is perfect to accept love from others. In our dance with unconditional love, so far we haven't spoken a word into the world. It's all been those stories in our head. We are surrendering to being enough. Being enough to accept love from someone else. We create space for others to easily love us and they feel the power of loving someone as their love is real, it is cherished, and it is felt. Being able to accept love, being lovable, opens the space for others to step into. Our dance with unconditional love continues with our ability to love others as their authentic selves. No story in our head that they need to look a certain way, weigh a specific amount, talk a certain way, say certain things, dress a certain way, or marry a specific person, or have a certain job. That however they are, they are enough for us to love. In our dance with unconditional love, we hold they are enough, that they're doing the best they can, and we accept them as they are, and as they are not. We do not have a story that we need to change them or that they need to change themselves. In our dance with unconditional love so far, we have not spoken a word out loud. It's all language or stories we have in our own heads. And we surrender to them being enough, being enough to accept our love. And our dance with unconditional love continues in our being enough and creating gifts that make it easy to love us. Reflect on a gift that someone has given you and the story that you made up of love. A gift can be a glance across a crowded room, taking out the trash, preparing a meal, moving laundry to the next stage, speaking their virtues, defending you, filling up your gas tank, registering the cars, buying a gift, or sitting quietly together. Add in your own gift. Lauren and John are sharing their commitments with each other, with us today, and unconditional love is their foundation. Unconditional love can be the foundation for a marriage. It can be a foundation for a family, for friends, for partners, for neighbors, well, maybe just everyone. John and Lauren and I invite you to choose unconditional love. You are enough to be loved by others just the way you are. Others are enough and ready to accept your love. Look for opportunities to create and give gifts of love. Remember that child earlier? That was you. That was me. That's the person sitting next to you. That is your child. That is your parents. It is the one, hu one human condition that can pull us apart or pull us together. We know what we are choosing. John and Lauren and I understand choice to be selecting someone or something while being free from considerations. Would you like to hold hands? 
Lauren, do you choose John to be your partner in marriage and in life? I do. John, do you choose Lauren to be your partner in marriage and in life? I do. Okay, please repeat after me. Lauren, I commit to love you, meaning I accept you for all that you are and all that you are not. I commit to love you, meaning that I accept you for all that you are and all that you're not. I commit to honor you, meaning I hold you in high regard. I commit to honor you, meaning that I hold you in high regard. I commit to cherish you, meaning that I hold your concerns as important as my own. I commit to cherish you, meaning that I hold your concerns as important as my own. I commit to being easy to love, easy to honor, and easy to cherish. I commit to being easy to love, easy to honor, and easy to cherish. I commit to be authentic, present, patient, and kind. I commit to be authentic, present, patient, and kind. I commit to honoring my truth and being curious about yours. I commit to honoring my truth and being curious about yours. I commit to being vulnerable, forgiving, and faithful. I commit to being vulnerable, forgiving, forgiving <laughs> and faithful. I commit to being grateful, happy, attractive, and fun. I commit to being grateful, happy, attractive, and fun. I commit to believing in you and believing in us for all the days of my life. I commit to believing in you and believing in us for all the days of my life. John, I commit to love you, meaning I accept you for all that you are and all that you are not. I commit to love you, meaning I accept you for all that you are and all that you're not. I commit to honor you, meaning that I will hold you in high regard. I commit to honor you, meaning I hold you in high regard. I commit to cherish you, meaning that I hold your concerns as important as my own. I commit to cherish you, meaning I hold your concerns as important as my own. I commit to being easy to love, easy to honor, and easy to cherish. I commit to being easy to love, easy to honor, and easy to cherish. I commit to being authentic, present, patient, and kind. I commit to being authentic, present, patient, and kind. I commit to honoring my truth and being curious about yours. I commit to honoring my truth and being curious about yours. I commit to being vulnerable, forgiving, and faithful. I commit to being vulnerable, forgiving, and faithful. I commit to being grateful, happy, attractive, and fun. I commit to being grateful, happy, attractive, and fun. I commit to believing in you and believing in us for all the days of my life. I commit to believing in you and believing in us for all the days of my life. Great, thanks. If I could have the kids join us. Lauren, to Brooklyn. Even though I am not your mother. Brooklyn, even though I am not your mother. I commit to loving you. I commit to loving you. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to supporting you, freely being you. I commit to supporting you, freely being you. I commit to being there for you, both in hard times and in happy times. I commit to being there for you, both in hard times and in happy times. 
I will always believe in you. I will always believe in you. Thanks. For Caitlin, Lauren, even though I am not your mother, I commit to loving you. Caitlin, even though I'm not your mother, I commit to loving you. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. I commit to being there for you both in hard times and in happy times. I commit to being there for you in both hard times and happy times. I will always believe in you. I will always believe in you. Garrett, even though I am not your mother, Garrett, even though I am not your mother, I commit to loving you. I commit to loving you. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. I commit to being there for you in both hard times and happy times. I commit to being there for you in both hard times and happy times. I will always believe in you. I will always believe in you. Maddie, even though I am not your mother, I commit to loving you. Maddie, even though I'm not your mother, I commit to loving you. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. <laughs> I commit to being there for you in both the hard times and the happy times. I commit to being there for you in both the hard times and the happy times. I will always believe in you. I will always believe in you. John? Sydney, even though I am not your father, I commit to loving you. Sydney, even though I'm not your father, I commit to loving you. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to caring for you as if you were my own. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. I commit to supporting you in freely being you. I commit to being there for you in both hard times and happy times. I commit to being there for you even in hard times and happy times. I will always believe in you. I will always believe in you. Okay. This is for everyone. Do you, John, Lauren, Caitlin, Maddie, Garrett, Brooklyn, and Sydney take each other as your family members and friends to stand by each other and believe in each other through fights and through fun, trusting that you will be stronger together forever. We do. We do. We do. <laughs> Come here. Very good. This one's for Brooklyn. I'm gonna do Brooklyn's first. <laughs> Caitlin's next. Nobody's gonna know. Pull it, off, pull it off your collar in the back.
This one? You want to put this one in Sydney? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Just put it in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do I do with it? <laughs> put it in your pocket. Okay. <laughs> oh, am I going first? <laughs> it's not coming up. You may now share your first kiss as husband and wife. Friends and family, I have the honor of introducing to you Mr. and Mrs. Choublanc. Straight through town So 
Baby, put on that dress A little sweet perfume Cause I'm on my way to you Me, they love to give the credit. 
get it too But me don't mean a thing without you You make sacrifices every night and day Never hear the crowd scream your name But there's a smile and a hand to hold when the show is through Cause you care too much About watching me watch my dreams all come true When I'm up here on this stage The spotlight's on my face But I say you Sure it's me behind this mic stand And it's me strumming this Gibson It's me they love to give the credit to Just to spend one night with your baby at a country show Paid twenty damn dollars for a place to park Got a line early to grab your spot So you deserve every word, every line of your favorite tune you yeah. 